Not only are you getting a Thursday night football preview of the New Orleans Saints and the Los Angeles Rams. Without Tony. Without Tony, even better. But you're getting two extra games in the preview. We're going to go through the Saturday night games as well. There is the Bengals playing at Pittsburgh. Rivalry, 4.30 p.m. Eastern time on the 23rd. And the Bills play at the Chargers on Saturday night at 8 o'clock on Peacock. I got bad news for them. <laughs> Nobody's downloading Peacock to watch that shit. No, Peacock fucked up. I like the energy that they had. They probably paid like forty million dollars yeah. to have that fucking game. Some guy probably like put his like yeah. name on the line. Like this is this is the risk we need to take. Like Seven months ago, we're Peacock, the, and now the shows ain't hitting. They're blaming that poor fellow. You know what happens when you put your name out there on Justin Herbert? <laughs> this is typically yeah. the result of that. Exactly. So we're going to go through all three games, you know, look at uh, the weather, of course. We're going to look at the fantasy options. Y'all are in the semifinals of your fantasy game. So this might be important. You might just want to fade everything that we're yapping about right now. But here goes fucking nothing. We're going to do a normal 30 minutes per game like we usually do on Thursday nights. So this is a good hour and a half plus episode. Up. Saints play at the Rams. The Rams are four point favorites. 46 and a half point over under. It does matter because both teams are fighting for playoff spots. Saints are right behind the Bucks for the NFC South. The Rams are in a wild card spot, I believe, right now. It's weird. They're in like different tiers to me, but like Saints win this game and it's like, hold who, up. Who to go? Saints in the playoffs? Say it, Dan. Derek Carr in the playoffs? I want to see Matt Stafford in the playoffs bad. So bad. Because it's, it's like with playoff teams, those like wild card teams, I don't care what you did in the regular season. I yep. want to know that you have a, a one game ceiling. I want to know that you could give me like a really exciting one game and you know that the Rams offense can do that. They get to play Philly round one. The way Philly is like fireworks, Philly frauds, have fun picking the Eagles. It's, it's scary. The Philadelphia fraud. So I'm looking at this game and there's nothing that really sticks out to me for the Saints. I think Chris Olave should be back. Mm -hmm. Derek Carr is good to go. I think for the most part, like both sides are relatively at full strength as far as your skill players go at least but is there anyone I guess you know you're obviously starting Kyron you're starting Puka Cup's been back-to-back -back huge games so you love him Olave if he's playing you're obviously starting Kamara's been a little bit disappointing he's still giving you like double starting. digits so facts is there anyone just like sneaky in this matchup I mean uh, if that we're like trying to start these are the two I was going to talk about Taysom I feel like he's been pretty quiet but I've it's, he's due that's my logic touchdown is due but the other two that question marks around, I'm not going to do it, but Demarcus Robinson's getting some love. He is. Uh, I will say 2-2, two -two, clear concussion protocol. That's Don't know point. that it matters, though, because Demarcus has kind of taken over the 2-2 two -two role. It's not like 2-2's two done much. No, he like... hasn't. He was like kind of cool in the beginning of the year, and then Demarcus like just became 2-2. Two -two mm -hmm. And towards... that was when Cup was out. Since Cup came right. back, he hasn't done anything. Good point. Whoever was the third wide receiver. But Robinson's been... been kind of cool lately and I, I kind of feel like he's carved out a role to the point where like he probably plays over 2-2 I think you got to be really desperate to throw either of those guys into your lineup any interest in like a Tyler Higby is he, if he's allowed or is it David Allen jo that's the fuck is that interest no I think I have like Higby at like tight end like 22 23 okay. and the ECR is like you have him four spots too high and I'm really? like yeah. <laughs> what about Juwan but Johnson? Juwan he's coming off a big game but that was like he's his first tempting big game. but that was without Olave go for it if you need but it's not like let's not just jump them ahead of your guys that's been consistent all year this is what only about the only one I could see like really making a case for Juwan I got no interest in but what about Rashid Shahid because he did finally come back last week I believe he led the team in targets and he Kind of came back and immediately became a full-time player. And he was good the first, like, eight weeks yeah, of the season uh, before getting hurt. I like to label him as knockoff Gabe Davis. That's kind of the way I see him. It's not great right now, considering how Gabe Davis is playing. No, Gabe Davis has become a knockoff Gabe. Like, it's horrible. Yeah. He's putting up a lot Gabe of Gabe Davis dunks. might be knockoff for Shiji. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I have him as the low 50s. Okay. But the ECR says I'm low on him. I don't know if I could put him in that 40 range where it's all of a sudden like a somewhat tempting flex play. As I weird as it is, yeah. It, with this over under 46 and a half, I mean, they're in SoFi Stadium, so it's going to be like mm -hmm. good conditions all around. I think you could probably do worse than Rashid Shahid. If I would take like really, Rashid really, over Robinson if we're yeah. comparing the two. That's for sure. It's again, it's like if you have to dig in the barrels. Amongst the shitty options, he's a good one, but let's not just put him his name above others that's been consistent all year. Yeah, the Saints defense really just hasn't been what... They were kind of like chalked up to or what what we've looked at them for the last few years. They've, they've kind of been crumbling all around. They have a lot of injuries, I think, that they're actually dealing with, too. So there's really no one that you would normally start. They're getting old, that too. You wouldn't. Yeah, they're getting old Cameron fast. Jordan, Davis, Tyran, Tyran, Tyran. Like, we don't even hear about 
Honey Badger anymore. No. Like we know he's on the team, but there's I no generally talk. if you told like if you asked me what team he was on, I wouldn't have been able to tell you that he yeah, was on the Saints crazy. right now. I think everything is pretty like straightforward with this game. I, I really like the Rams here again. I do think with all these wild card teams kind of fighting for a spot, I think the team with the veteran quarterback leader that's playing well, who is Stafford here, will be the one that ultimately like leads their team to the playoffs. So I have I have the Rams here. I'm gonna take Rams minus mm-hmm. four. I guess I'll take the over. I think I'm gonna do the same, but I'll take the under. I just Hi. I don't know. You know, me, <laughs> me and you aren't the fucking over nah, under guys. This is I Tony's. actually hate taking the over unders. <laughs> yeah, this is Tony's thing. There's no more rhyme or reason for that shit. Even the spread, I'm like, yeah. I, I guess. I'll tell you, there's a rhyme or reason for the Bengals and the Steelers being at 36 and a half because those offenses, not the best. <laughs> Dude, a month ago, it was like Tomlin deserves coach of the year. To all of a sudden, everyone is hating this man. So the Bengals minus two on the road in Pittsburgh, 36 and a half point over under. Mike Tomlin, I saw something on Twitter the other day that I thought was like a really good comp for the Tomlin situation. Well, I can't stand people being like he's not a good coach anymore. I think someone said um, the Mike Tomlin situation feels really similar to like Andy Reid in Philadelphia. Like he's clearly not a bad coach, but Mm -hmm. they just need to kind of move on and probably both go down a different path and like refresh things. I agree in that sense, but I also think like just move off a Pick it. Like, take your loss. Like, what are you going to do? Move off of Tomlin and double down on Kenny? I kind of think they're going to have to go back to Kenny next year. <sighs> just can't like, they don't, like, what, what, I don't know. Kenny? I don't know what options they really have. Obviously, they can go after a vet, but I feel like that's a little bit harder to, to could, do. Yeah, I mean, you could, they're just not an aggressive franchise. What about this? Mike Tomlin to the Patriots. He feels like someone that they would oh, go after. dude. Mike Tomlin to the Pats. They have a, a new quarterback coming in next year. You want a fresh start, you get your guy. You hate that you love it. You hate that <laughs> no, you love it. it just sounds gross. Like, like what are the Patriots is. doing? I feel like you're just still taking in another veteran defensive-minded coach. Like, if you're get, going off of Bill Belichick, but dude, I, go I, off of Bill Belichick entirely. I don't know, man. I feel like the organizations that are run that way craft knows the type of guys looking for and i think it's probably a dude like tomlin i don't know if he wants to go for like young and exciting i think he wants to go for like a system oriented process oriented person yeah i mean he's probably not gonna sign anyone from like the shanahan or mcveigh tree but yeah you know what i mean like that'd be so out of left field if the patriots were like yeah hey, we're gonna just try to be young and exciting like tomlin feels like yeah He's the, the guy. Move. Let's let's talk about the game though. Cincinnati. So Jake Browning's been playing fucking phenomenally. I heard this morning a stat that kind of blew my mind. Since he's taken over the three starts, he's finished as the QB four, the QB nine, and the QB four in fantasy. Wow. Two top five finishes right now. He's kind of getting is it done he through his the legs this week. Jamar Chase is going to be out though. He's going to be out for a couple weeks. T. Higgins looked like he was kind of finally back. I guess mm-hmm. I don't really know how comfortable I feel with him. I is, is it safe to say Jamar's out of the fantasy playoffs? You consider seventeen the cutoff. The reports say that he's likely out for two weeks. Yeah. So there's a really good chance that you're without him for both uh, both of those weeks, which is Tough. unfortunate. Yeah, so it might be without him. Higgins, obviously, you can throw Boyd in there. Tanner Hudson's been kind of low key, pretty nice for a minute. Nixon's been cooking. Yeah, it makes a sense. Too well. But get, also, getting a lot of touchdowns. What's his face? Chase Brown? Chase Brown. Dude, he's been getting some love. Yeah, he's been getting like, some serious touches. We're feeling a transition. It's weird. Like, I was looking at the snap counts. He's still, like, last week he played 17% of the snaps, but he's still getting. Mm-hmm. It, it's like when he's on the field, they make it a, a really concerted effort to make sure that he gets touches. It was like Keaton Mitchell three, four weeks ago. Like, 100 That's a really good comp. Yeah, because yeah, Joe Mixon is like fucking Gus Edwards at this point, to be honest <laughs> yeah, with you. Yeah, pretty much. He's like fat, slow, but, like, he'll get into the end zone if you give it to him on the one-yard line. What do you think about the Steelers' backs? I have them back to back in like the low or high twenties, like yeah. twenty eight, twenty nine. So hard to trust them right it now. Is. I don't think there's any way I put Najee into my lineup. Warren also feels like. Did you see? It was because they were trailing, but Warren saw a season high in like seventy percent of the snaps, and he's never gone above sixty this year. And Najee went down to thirty four. He's never gone into the forties. I think Najee fumbled last game. In, like, an important situation, and I think that's probably why I think he got benched because I remember them continuously. You know when a player, like, fumbles, and then they're, like, sad? They just, like, keep fucking zooming yeah. in on their face during the broadcast. <laughs> but regardless, like, when they're down, yeah, like, Warren's mm-hmm. obviously their best pass catcher. So I don't I don't really have a strong take on it. This is, again, one of those divisional matchups where it feels like they tend to lean towards, like, ground and pound, let's mm-hmm. try to be a defensive-minded team sort of thing. So, like, Najee would be a desperate RB3 for me. Warren, I feel a little bit better about, but even recently, he hasn't really done shit, so I don't... To me, they're both just ugly flex plays. Yeah, facts. Uh, um, Deontay? Three straight tutties? 
feels a little uh, unsustainable, but... I just think he's the best receiver on that team for what they're doing. Also, Mason Rudolph, we didn't even talk about this. Mason Rudolph is their starter this this week over Trubisky. That's a good point. So he's kind of like almost a bad version of Kenny Pickett. So that's gross God, all that's around. Disgusting, dude. And the Bengals' low defense low-key dirty, like given the circumstances. I feel like it's always underrated. This feels really trappy. Like I feel really comfortable saying Cincy minus two here. If I had to bet my life on it, yeah, I would go with Cincy. But it's like if the Steelers come out on top, Mike Tomlin's back against the wall, everyone's shitting on him, and they pull, squeak out a win, I'm not going to be shocked. So that also felt like that was supposed to be last week, and they also lost to, like, the car. They also lost to, like, multiple, like, fucking terrible, terrible teams. Like I don't know. The Colts have had, like, a strong identity all year. The Bengals, though, without Jamar, I don't know. Maybe Browning is that good. It's just I'm kind of like, are you going to keep this up? Without Jamar, I think what he's going to be forced to do is, like, target T the same way that he targeted Jamar, but they're not, not the, same. the same player. They're no. not the same player. So, I mean, if you have T, I think you're putting him into your lineup and feeling pretty good. He's got a tough matchup against probably a lot of Joey Porter Jr. You see, to not to pivot to the other side, but Pickens, like, everyone's hating on him, too, for not trying and stuff yeah. and avoiding the block. Do you think that's, like, going to be an issue in his – Yeah. I, I don't think he's long for Pittsburgh. No. I, I think he's like I think even he's most, immediately though I'm saying for fantasy this week I wouldn't want to touch him. Yeah, I mean he's like one of those players that he's so like skill wise he's so talented that he could give you big plays, but no matter what you're still gonna need him to likely score to right. be worthwhile. Yeah, and I think we really haven't seen those big plays unless it's I feel like been with Pickett for the most part. I don't trust really anyone with Mason Rudolph. I throw Deontay Johnson in there as like a low end wide receiver three. I think Pickens. Yeah, the, you saw those videos of him like on the block with Warren. Yeah, and he called out. He said he came out, like, he was talking about the tank Dell. Tank Dell, yeah. Yeah, which, like, I guess I understand, but I can't imagine that goes well in the dude, locker room. <laughs> yeah, not at all. Like, dude, you got your he guy's about to like, score. Yeah. It's not even like he didn't give it his all. Like, he just didn't try at all. Yeah. Not great. And, the, yeah, he just feels like the next line of – I actually was talking about this exact thing on the stream on Monday. But he just – he feels like the next, like, diva wide receiver, except he – most of the diva wide receivers that you think about – Are good. Are awesome. Yeah, He's it's Chase like the Claypool. TOs, OBJ, right. Like, you can't be a diva <laughs> and also not be elite. Yeah. It's all the Steelers wide receivers. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So AB's fucking amazing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's <laughs> that's my concern with Pickens. I don't think Pittsburgh's going to want him there long term. I think he's more, like, problematic for the team. Although he's, like, super fucking skilled. Maybe he maybe he goes, He so I would say he'd go, maybe be a Patriot guy. Or Bill can put him in. That, but, but if Mike Tomlin's over there. That's true. You know what I but mean? A, He's also, like, if he ends up on the Chiefs or, like, you know, he's like, all right, they're fucking going to use him to the nth degree. Maybe. I don't know. Everyone always, like, puts every Justin Ross going to be so fucking good. He's so athletic. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Fuck that in the ways. Let's, uh, let's talk about fantasy, though. <laughs> so, Jake Browning, obviously really, really good in fantasy recently, but no Jamar Chase. I'm st- Yeah, I'm still not going to give him a QB1 ranking. Yeah. I could check where I have him exactly. Yeah, I think most likely I'll probably, I would have him in the QB, like, I don't know, 15, 16 range. Yeah, that sounds right. Mixon, you're probably starting as i don't know rb 15 rb 15 to 18 like, you have them higher than that i, I kind of think of my rankings like eliminating the thursday night guys true he's probably a top 12 back at that point S- 17 okay. i have russ and how okay. oh actually 16 because i didn't take Stroud out yet so Stroud's dead yeah like i said the running backs low end flex plays jalen warren i do have ahead of naji but i still group them together very very tightly t higgins has a low end Wide receiver two, I think, in that 25-26 range. I think I might be a little bit higher than that. On T? Yeah. I feel like a little bit more comfortable just because of his... Admittedly, like, this is a very biased recency take. If he had a bad game last week, I probably wouldn't be on him. He had, he had a good game, so I'm like, okay, maybe, like, wide receiver 20, 22, something like that. Mm. To me, I just see it as, like, a tier difference of, like, I'm throwing him in the starting line versus, like, oh, just filling a flex spot. It's, 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 maybe it's just the way my mind thinks, but it's, like, it's a tier difference. I'm like, I just can't bump him up. Where do you have the rest of the Bengals? Because I feel like they have a ton of dudes that are on, like, the borderline starting, like Tanner Hudson, Tyler Boyd, Joe Mixon, Chase Brown. Let me find Boyd. He's probably in the 40s. Yeah. Yeah, I have Boyd at 47. Boyd's been like a fake handcuff receiver, I feel like, for three fucking years now. Hudson I have at tight end 26. The ECR has him at uh, tight end 30. Are you serious? Yeah. I mean, the ECR, I'm kind of like just done with the ECR. Like, it doesn't even matter. I feel like Hudson's been kind of good, no? He definitely hasn't been 26 to 30. Check his game log. I feel like he's like a 5 for 50 every week. 5 for 50 last week. The week before, 3 for 20 with the tutty. The week before, 4 for 35. The week before, 5 for 18. The week before, 4 for 50. Okay. Not great, I guess. But I think I'd play him over 
Juwan Johnson with Jamar Chase out. Really? Yeah. I got Juwan at 23. I mean, I guess this is the point where people I like think need that a help top decision. 20. I think he's a top 20 guy. You throw him in the teens? No, like top like 20 maybe. All right. Around there. Who, who are like the five guys ahead of him? Juwan, Otten, Chiggy, Hunter Henry, Pat. Jesus Christ. Yeah, they're all bad. <laughs> they're all yeah. in the same tier of just it's, like, I don't fucking know. It's tough. Maybe four here. for fifty. Maybe four for thirteen. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a touchdown. It's it's again. It's just whoever's getting that random tutty that they shouldn't have. Yeah. What about the running backs, Mixon and Chase? Mixon, I have at RB eleven, and then Chase. I feel like Chase is not like really. He's startable. not someone like I want to rely on. <sighs> I feel like I'd have to be so desperate. You have to be in like a fourteen. I feel like team league to put him in. Yeah, I got him at like fifty. He's, in the, he's all the way up in the fifties. Yeah, I just can't. Yeah. I mean. He's above, at this point, I'd probably take him over, like, a Miles Sanders, Damian Pierce for sure. But it's still, like... Damian Pierce, I feel like, shouldn't even be in rankings No, anymore. I mean, he's at, like, below 20%. Yeah. But he's in that point of, like, who do you want? Chase Brown or Hunt or Algier or A.J. Dillon? Yeah. Like, I can pick your apple. You're looking for the exact number. Is anybody out? Um, I mean, we could talk about Fryermuth if you want. Rudolph, I wouldn't even want to touch. Are the Steelers on a three-game losing streak? Colts and then two really bad opponents before that? Or did they... They lost to the Patriots. And... Didn't they lose? They lost to a really bad team before that, too. They lose to the Cardinals? Yeah. They, they got did, their right? ass beat. Cardinals, Patriots, Colts, I think. Unless they got to win somewhere Tomlin in between. Tomlin bad? Tomlin might be the world. <laughs> Patriots might not even hire his ass. Right? Um, yeah, so I will take... <laughs> we beat them. <laughs> Why would we want them? I will take Cincy minus two. Yeah. I will also take... Will the, you take Cincy to make the playoffs? I'm going to take the under. Um, I guess so. I feel like if they win this, they're probably in, It's no? kind of gross, but yeah. It's kind of like we'll get to the Bills in a second where I feel like this two-game big win streak over Dallas and Kansas City, it's like they're in. It feels like with like the records, it's still tight. Yeah. Is it one between the Bengals and the Bills, or can they both get in? I think the Colts are in that mix. They're eight and six because uh, the Browns are like nine and five, so they could eat one. Yeah. There's a, they, they would need a couple losses to other teams. Damn. Some team's going to go like 10 and fucking seven and be a hundred percent yeah all right so we'll move to the last game of the saturday night slate it's the bills at the chargers they're also in sofi stadium so shout out to the people in california getting bike to bike nights out there buffalo is 12 point favorites going cross country here 43 and a half point over under obviously we saw what happened to the chargers against the raiders Last Thursday night, and we saw the Bills versus the Cowboys on Sunday night? Or was that Monday night? That was Sunday. That was Sunday at like 4.20, Sunday morning, cool, whatever. <laughs> um, the Bills obviously just fucking shit on the Cowboys through their ground game. James Cook came off of a absolutely Dude, just ridiculous we would game. be talking about him even more if CMC didn't drop like 40 fantasy points. But yeah. like James Cook. Him. Over 200 yards from scrimmage, a couple touchdowns, even dropped a touchdown pass, too. Like, he could have had more touchdowns, which is very... <laughs> I, I think most of the storyline is, like, uh, Joe Brady taking over as offensive coordinator. I'll be honest, I think it's more, like... I think it's Josh Allen's willingness. I, I don't think James Cook's numbers have really changed that much in terms of... Yeah, his, if, I'm, if his, I'm being honest, I think Ken Dorsey kind of falsely got fired. I don't know if I'm, like, backing Ken Dorsey whatsoever, but I just don't think, like, the... I don't think everything changed with Joe Brady. Mm -hmm. I think it's more of, like, Josh Allen, James Cook kind of clicking now his usage is kind of the same like in terms of the uh, percentage of carries he's getting percentage of everything it's just like his target rate so he's not necessarily getting like a ton more targets but just like the targets per route run are going his way I think it's Josh Allen's willingness to use his running backs in the passing game more rather than always trying to take the deep ball always trying to chuck it it's like all right I can throw it at Gabe Davis for <laughs> 47 yards coming at a cost of Gabe <laughs> correct yeah it's like we can throw to Gabe Davis 47 yards or I could dump it off to James Cook for four and maybe he turns it into 17 and that's working really fucking yeah. well right now uh Kincaid's taking a slip though a little bit correct I don't even know if I would fully blame Knox so I feel like it's just it's not it's it is it is I think you think it's not to do like Knox is not good Knox is not doing anything but that's the problem with, like, so many tight ends, especially rookie ones, is, like, they need the perfect storm in order mm. to... Re like, I don't even I don't even think that if they started... If, if the I Cardinals guess, started playing, like, Ertz again, I, I feel like just McBride probably say. wouldn't be eaten like he is now, but they got rid of him instead. So it's, like, it's he hard. Team. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what's going to happen with Knox in the offseason. So hopefully he's gone. So I feel like really they gave him over. a big deal two years ago. They gave him... It, at least big enough to, like, it shows you're committed. Big as the what? Super Bowl. <laughs> I, I think, uh, I'm not sure. I feel like it might have been kind of, like, big money-wise. Maybe, like, three-year big money. But that usually tends to mean, like, two years with, like, the option to get out after the second See ya, year. Brother. Big yeah. as the... Um, 
So you love Josh Allen. You love James Cook, especially against the Chargers as a shit. He's defense. like RB5 this week. Yeah, not surprising whatsoever. Ridiculous. So obviously in your lineup, Diggs, he's, you know, hasn't been playing well, but he has to be in your lineup. Where do you have Kincaid? <laughs> Based uh, based on everything that's been happening, well, I can't wait till we get into Austin Eckler. Um, Kincaid, I tight end ten. ECR has him on seven. Jeez. Yeah, even ten. I'm kind of like, is this a little high? I agree. He's like barely a one right now. I feel like. Yeah, because right now I'm looking at him. I have him over likely, and I just don't think I could keep him. Hell there. Yeah, no. no. Likely, I feel like it's a smash. He's every been week. cooking. Yeah, dude, the ECR is horrible. Has Goddard at tight end nineteen? We got it. We got to We need a shutdown Big fantasy so pros. All right, I just I just put him under likely quickly. Yeah, do that. Where's I feel like likely should be a top five right now. Uh, I just put him at ten or whatever. ECR has him at eleven. Who are the guys? Give me like the five in front of him. Ferg, Engram, Njoku, Kittle, McBride. Okay, those are pretty good. They're like in the tier, I think, together. But likely, I feel like it's... I, you could. I I might put likely over Engram because Engram's been cooking, and it's like. I You're agree. still banking on like those yeah. big games, and those probably aren't going to happen again. I have a couple playoff teams. I think I'm starting multiple tight ends. Like I think I have a team where I have Kittle and McBride, and I'm like I want both mm-hmm. of them in my lineup probably. I think in a lot of the best ball drafts, like I've my lineup's been using the tight ends just because yeah. I need them. Yeah, I have a lot of McBride likely in best ball. I remember and, and some Kittle too. So sitting pretty there. On the flip side, on the flipper side, we've got. What's you doing with uh? We got Stick Keenan Allen. Looks like he's probably just going to shut it down at this point. Yeah, I I'm kind of interested in Josh Palmer. I don't think he's a bad start. Yeah, I would put him. I think I'd put him like above Boyd when we were talking in those 40s earlier. I would too. Yeah, I think he's a lower 40s, like not a disgusting flex play to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's like around disgusting that in the sense of like spot. we're still banking on Josh Palmer in the fantasy playoffs, but it's like not horrible. Palmer's okay. Everett's like another guy you got to be desperate for, but also could probably do worse. Mm-hmm. Who we want to talk about Eckler? You did. Yeah. So, so, so do it. talk about him in the sense like he just sucks, dude. I just can't. I just can't. I can't. I can't play him. So I got sent this video i haven't watched it yet so this is matt Harmon does a podcast with austin eckler every single Mm -hmm. week and they talk about fantasy and i'm actually i told you i'm playing against austin eckler in the semifinals (laughs) of this fucking league he's he's, austin eckler good fantasy player I'm not gonna say sorry. I mean, we could. He, he's he's spoken like a true uh, content creator in the fantasy space. Yeah, he's letting the comments get to him a little bit. He is even like if you want to believe in him, it's like matchup. This game is just gonna get blown to bits and there's going to be no run game and maybe that could open up the passing for him which is what he's used to excel at but like i'm still not seeing no he doesn't look good whatsoever i'm still not banking on easton stick so what i was thinking from that clip this was the first time i watched a clip and i thought it was going to be like more context behind why he's performing so poorly Mm -hmm. i thought people i was like I replied to JL, like, that clip alone is going to get him drafted in the top 15 again next year. Because people are just going to be like, this is what he said. This is why he was slow, because his ankle yeah. was, like, taped up to his toes or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah, no, he's been he's been terrible. I do, like, I don't know. Eckler feels like one of those dudes in that league where I'm starting multiple tight ends. It's my most important dynasty league. The matchup is huge. It's like, do I start Eckler? Because I have him. I have C-Mac, and I have Kamara as running backs already. And then I'm deciding between flex plays where one of them could be McBride, it could be Eckler, but it could be like Cortland Sutton or Pittman, Mm -hmm. guys like that and stuff like, you know, and I'm like, okay, (sighs) if I sit Eckler and he ends up going for like, I mean, just two weeks ago, he went for 100 100 yards, a touchdown and caught like six passes. But that feels like his ceiling now, like 16 points might be the cap for him. Sure. But it's also like, okay. What am I going to be more upset about? If I sit Cortland Sutton and he goes five for 70 and touchdown, or if I sit Austin Eckler and he catches seven passes for 100 yards and a touchdown, I'm like, ah. Oh. And I get it. The reality of the situation, this is what makes fantasy so difficult. The reality of the situation is by any logical measurable, <laughs> like Eckler should be sat. There's no reason yeah. to be playing him right now. The team makeup, the quarterback. I mean, if you did the blind resume. Not close. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree, but I don't agree. I doubt he'll... I mean, I don't know. Just I'm going based off the hit alone. But if you could get Pittman, he's got to be the move. Then. So I think he's... I have Tyreek as my one, hopefully. I have Pittman as my two, also hopefully. Both of those might be fucking out. And then yeah. below them, I don't remember who my receivers are. I think Pittman might be just like in my starting lineup, not my flex. But 
I think it might be between like him and Sutton and Sutton McBride Eckler. McBride will almost definitely be one of my flexes there. Guts texting us about his hip right now. I think <laughs> he's up and alive. Okay. We'll get to that after. Uh, yeah. So Bills Chargers Eckler. Where do you have him ranked? You said he's like low end RB two for me. That's what I mean. Like he's still like you're probably still starting him there. Yeah, it's just it doesn't just show the numbers. Like, would you start Eckler or Higgins? Like, I think I'd start. I think I'd go T. I think I'd go T too. I got. But it. I would play Eckler over like the running backs. Deontay I, Johnson. Yeah, that's probably it about the guy we talked yeah. about. The running backs I have in front of Eckler are Javante, Aaron Jones, A. Chain, Swift. Like he's not. There's just no way he could jump any of those guys. Maybe Javante. I was Javante maybe. And maybe Aaron Jones, but it's like. If A.J. Dillon maybe was back, here. maybe Jones, yeah. The, but the, that's the tier he's in right now. Exactly. The guys behind him, Zeke, James Conner, Ty Chandler, the Steelers guys. Oh, you got to move Chandler up. He's going to be the workhorse again this week. You think? I would start Chandler Who over. Who are they playing? <sighs> Doesn't Detroit. It's fine. Really? Yeah. Move Chandler up. Who are the other guys you had there? Zeke, Conner, Steelers boys. I would... if. If I had Zeke, I think I'd probably play Zeke over Eckler, too. I feel really good about him. Oh, I really thought you were going to be, like, saying to move him up. We're going to help him move back. What about Gus? Back that ass up. Uh, I'm good. I'd play Eckler <laughs> over Gus. <laughs> they play the nine, Niners this week, right, on Christmas? Yeah. I feel like he's so going to score. Maybe. I just, I mean, he's it. got no upside. Except three I mean, Eckler might be just as likely to score as fucking Gus at that point. Um you got to think, like, if Keenan, I don't know. They've, they're down so many weapons at this point. They're going to have to score. Uh, ah, fuck it. Quentin, Whatever. you think? I don't think I could. Oh, hell no. No. He, in my, in the, in he's the semis, ramping up, though. In the semis, fuck. He's no. ramping up. Next year, sleeper, bounce bike. Oh, my God. All right, who you t- what, what line you taking, who you taking, what you taking, where you taking, why you taking. I think I taking? just have to take the points of Buffalo. I mean, this team is horrible. I will say, though, maybe it was just... Cross country, though? I didn't watch the game. Cross country. Bills are coming off hot. Chargers got their ass beat. The emotions are so Mm -hmm. polar opposites that... But with that said, I just can't. Yeah, hell no. I'm not taking the fucking Charger. Easton Stick is a fumble machine. Yeah, they might... The Bills might actually run the ball 50 times this game. Yeah. Like, and I think we're going to see the defense just... Not that they're good, but they're going to now give up on top of already not being good. Yeah. This is where Stefan Diggs probably bounces back and has a two touchdown game and is finally. I don't even think Allen's going to need get, get a bunch of uh, enough volume for Diggs to like really pop. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't imagine they really go away from yeah. their game plan from last week. Allen's might be killing some fantasy teams. Could be. I still got him as like QB1, QB2, probably, yeah, but should be. It's Allen. Yeah. I'm taking Buff minus 12. I'll take the over. I was going to say, I'll take the over I don't over give a well. fuck. I'll take, I'll take the over. <laughs> okay. Shit don't matter. All right. Uh, well, there goes the three games. Saints-Rams, Bengals-Steelers, Bills-Chargers. We recapped it all for you. Hopefully, we didn't miss anything. I'm sure we missed many things. Mm-hmm. You guys will let us know in the comment section. Mm-hmm. If you enjoyed the video, also let us know in the comment section. Or you could let us know by hitting the button that looks like. And we will see you. I don't know if I'll see you. Yeah, Monday's Christmas Day, so I probably won't be doing the recap that day. But I'll see you Tuesday at the latest. I think Friday for you. Rankings. I'll be back Tuesday. Or er, my video, yeah. Yeah. What do I do? Am I sending that to you or Gut or Tony? Me. You might fire me. It's a big papa. You might fire me. It's big papa. It's going to be bad. I'm going to send it to Santa Claus to edit. Santa, this is what Keep I want. Keep saying that. I'm going to send it to Taiwan. I'm going to send it to Santa. Where are you sending it? <laughs> I'm sending it. I'm full send. <laughs> send it just straight to YouTube. That's why I'm sending it to Santa. I'll say, hey, this is what I want for Christmas. I want you to edit this shit. All right. Goodbye. Take us away. All right. That's our Thursday night, Saturday <laughs> night preview. Week 16, we're going to be back next week with Tony, with JL, with half a hip gutter stain. Merry Christmas. Enjoy your gifts. No coals. Check your stockings. Hang.